Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today we will talk about uniform motion. This lecture is part of the Physics for Teens course of uh, physics um, and uh, it's presented on website unizor.com as well as uh, very detailed notes for each lecture and uh, there are or there will be exams for each major section of this course so I do recommend you to watch the lecture from this website rather than from let's say YouTube or anywhere else because basically you are looking at the video on the YouTube only as a video on unizor.com it uh, as well has uh, notes and uh, exams etc and the site by the way is completely free there are no advertisements so you're okay now before talking about uh, the laws which guide the uniform motion, I would like to remind again, I did it before in one of the previous lectures, in the introduction actually, that um, you really have to be familiar with certain basic mathematic, uh, mathematical concepts, uh, primarily of vectors and calculus, especially derivatives. You should be really comfortable with this, and if you are not, um, just forget this course, go to the mathematics, Math for Teens, there is another course on the same website, and uh, refresh your knowledge from that course. It's also quite comprehensive um, course with problems, with, uh, um, uh, uh, with exams, uh, etc. So I do recommend you to get comfortable with vectors and with um, uh, calculus, especially differentiation, before you attempt to uh, listen to any lecture of this course. Now, considering this is done, and you are familiar with differentiation, with vectors, etc., now we will talk about uniform motion. So what is uniform motion? Well, um, in a simple language, uniform motion is the motion along a straight line, so trajectory is supposed to be a straight line in three-dimensional space. And also, you should cover the same distances during the same time. So, if you are um, uh, covering, let's say, one kilometer in the first five seconds, you have to cover one kilometer in any interval of five seconds along this trajectory or meter or whatever it is the distance which implies that the first derivative of coordinates should be constant this is velocity vector so, when I was talking about covering equal distance in equal time, it means that x of t2 minus x of t1 should be proportional to time, and x of t3 minus x of t2 should be proportional, now this is t2 minus t1, should be proportional between them etc. So any intervals should be proportional to the same um, coefficient, which is actually a speed along this particular uh, axis, in this case x-axis. Alright? So, we are talking about the motion with constant vector of velocity This is vector of velocity. It compon its components are a, b, and c. And this vector of velocity is supposed to be constant and independent of time. And these are components of this vector of velocity. The derivative from x, y, and z coordinates by time. So this is the definition. Okay. Now, from this definition, I would like to derive the law of motion, which means I would like to, de to derive position of the object as a function of time. Now, position are x of t, y of t, and z of t. Well, 
actually you can consider them as the components of the vector vector into the position so if you have three-dimensional space and you have a point somewhere it has certain coordinates so this is my vector of position if this is x this is y and this is z so this piece is x this is y and this is z okay so the vector to the point where object is located is obviously the function of time because the object is moving and we have this particular uh, vector which is the function of time it has three components each one of them obviously is the function of time and now my question is how are these related to these so I know that my velocity is the constant and I would like to find out what is my position well look at it this way the only function whose derivative is equal to constant a is linear function of argument t of the time and I have to add some kind of a constant uh, because the derivative of this regardless of the xo of x0 would be obviously a and I don't know what x0 is similarly I can have y of t is equal to bt plus y0 and z of t is equal to ct plus z0 so x0, x, y0 and z0 are unknown constants now what are these constants? we kind of found the laws of motion the equations which guide our motion however we have some unknown constants in them so what are these? well it's very easy substitute t is equal to 0 now t is equal to 0 is the beginning of motion, right? and what do we see? the x0 is equal to x of 0, right? this is 0, so x0 is equal to x of 0 y0 is equal to y of 0 and z0 is equal to z of 0 so these are components of the vector which points to the beginning point of the motion so if you would like to recreate completely the trajectory you not only have to know the speed or rather velocity I would say where the motion is actually occurring where we are moving but you also have to know the beginning point because again if you have a system of coordinates and let's say this would be a vector of velocity now if your position is here trajectory would be here if your position is here trajectory would be here so it depends on the beginning uh, position uh, starting position of the motion and then if the starting position is defined then we can actually using a b and c construct equations of motion so x0 y0 and z and, and, and z0 constitute basically the starting position of the motion we must have it if we would like to recreate the um, equations of motion based on the constant velocity constant velocity by itself does not define completely motion it defines basically only the direction and and the speed of moving uh, 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 along this uh, direction but it does not define the beginning point which is necessary to recreate the trajectory now I will allow myself to express this in a slightly different fashion now consider this vector p of t consider vector v constant I'll put it as a vertical thing and consider the vector p 
zero, which is the starting point, vector to a, to a point where we, we start. How can I express this using these three components? Well, very easily. Uh, I will do it here. Vector to the position at point uh, in time t is equal to time t times vector of velocity plus beginning position. Now, whenever I'm talking about this, obviously this is an equation for a vectors, for vectors in three-dimensional space. So I have to know how to multiply a vector by a constant. So what's the multiplication of vector v by a constant t? Well, whenever we are multiplying a vector by a constant, it means we are multiplying each component. So the components of this vector will be what? TA, TB, and TC, right? So this is TA, TB, and TC. This is the vector. Now, this vector is x0, y0, z0. And if you are add them together, again, whenever you are adding vectors, you are adding component by component separately you will get exactly this ta plus x0 tb plus y0 and tc plus z0 which is exactly this a t and t a same thing so basically my equation of motion is much shorter to express in this vector format which in many cases i will do. Not all of them. The, sometimes I would like actually to go component by component, but in any case this is a vector interpretation of the equation of motion. Or again, if you want, you can do it x of t is equal, y is equal, uh, of t is equal, z of t is equal. Now, now basically right now I am stating that this is uh, representing a trajectory which is a straight line in the three-dimensional space. Now, why is it straight line? Well, it's actually very easy. Take two points here. This is trajectory. Let's take the beginning and point P1. So this is the beginning of motion and this is motion at some moment P1, uh, at some moment T1, so P1 is, is actually P of T1. And then I will take uh, some other position, uh, P2, which is P of T2. All vectors. Now, if this is a straight line, basically to prove that this is a straight line, Vectors from P0 to P1 and from P0 to P2 must be collinear, right? Now, probably I shouldn't really put P0 in the middle between P1 and P2, since this is the beginning of motion and we are moving in one direction, probably it would be more appropriate if I will put P0 here. So forget about this point, because the time moves only forward. Well, technically there is nothing wrong with moving the time backwards, but in this particular case, it's kind of more philosophically understandable that if time moves forward. So it, at moment t0, this is p of t of 0, just of 0. I'm here. This is the beginning of motion. Then this is the moment of time t1, and this is the moment of time t2. Right? So let's just compare this vector and this vector there must be collinear, right? Well, let's just check it out. Now, this vector, p of 0, if I substitute 0, I will have p0, right? Now, this vector, p of t1, would be uh, uh, 
uh, would be T V plus P zero. And this this point would be this is T one and this is T two. V plus P zero. Again from this equation, right? Now what is this vector? And what is this vector? These are differences between vectors from the from the origin, right? So vector from point P0 to point P1 is a difference between P1 and P0. Now the difference between P1 and P0 obviously is uh, T V no T1 V. This is my P1 minus P0, which is equal to T1 V. Now, this vector from P0 to P2 is T2 V plus P0 minus P0, which is equal to T2 V. Are they collinear? Of course they are, because this is the same vector V multiplied by either T1 or T2. Obviously they are collinear, so the same vector of speed, whatever the vector of speed is, if we multiply it by one constant or another constant, we will get the uh, collinear results. It will be within the same line, right? So I can always say that they are all collinear and they are in particular collinear to the vector of speed, vector of velocity uh, v. So what I'm saying is the trajectory is a straight line and the direction of trajectory is exactly the direction of the velocity vector v. Okay, so that's easy, right? Now, considering this is a movement within a straight line, it's kind of obvious that you can choose the coordinate system if it's up to you to choose, by the way. Um, uh, it's natural to, to, to choose the, the, um, the coordinate system with one of the axes, let's say x, x axis, uh, going along this line. So if this is the trajectory, I will change my um, coordinate system instead of this one, I will use the, uh, the coordinate system which has origin somewhere on the line and x axis along the line. Now if my x axis is along the line, obviously my y and z coordinates would be equal to zero. So x of t would be equal to still the same, but my y of t would be zero and my z of t would be equal to zero. So that's kind of easier. And in many practical problems, let's say the car is moving along the road. Well, you probably choose a coordinate system somewhere on that road originating and the x-axis along the road. So the car is basically moving along the x-axis and perpendicular to it y and z axis uh, are basically always zero. So that's kind of easier. And your equation of uh, motion becomes actually... Now I should not put the vector here, I'm sorry. I should put the component of the vector. Now my components are A, B, and C, so this would be A. So that's kind of easier, in which case A is um, just a number, basically, which represents, in this particular case, we can say speed instead of velocity. It's not a vector, it's a component of the vector, X component of the vector, and it's actually, um, we have agreed that we can talk about speed in this particular case. That's the magnitude of the vector. And obviously, if my direction of my x-axis is the same as direction of the movement, A is positive. And if its uh, direction is uh, opposite, which doesn't make any sense, actually, to, to, to do, then A would be negative. Uh, so, um, so that's kind of easier to deal with because you're not e dealing with vectors, you're dealing with uh, scalars, right? One-dimensional case. And if you choose your coordinate system in such a way that the origin is exactly where uh, movement starts, 
then x0 would be equal to 0, right? So you will have even simpler equation of motion. This is the simplest equation of motion possible when you choose the coordinate system um, uh, origin exactly where the motion starts. You choose one particular um, axis along the trajectory of the motion, along the vector of speed, in which case these two components of the vector of speed obviously are equal to zero and uh, uh, the movement within those other two components also non-existent, it will always be zero and this is the simplest equation which represents the uh, uh, motion along the straight line with constant speed which we call uniform motion. Well, basically that's all I wanted to say about this particular uh, simplest of all possible um, uh, motions. I will also spend some time to talk about the motion with constant acceleration and, um, and also the rotation. That would be another two types of motions which we will analyze. Well, again, as a reminder, make sure that you are comfortable with vectors and calculus. That's a must for this course of Physics for Teens. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.